back, everybody. I'm Matt. Matt. I'm Jimmy. And we are Two Average Guys. Um, coming back at you again, talking about Husker football and everything else that happened yep. in college football yesterday. So, kind of a crazy day. We did have seven um, ranked teams lose yesterday. So, it was another, another, big, another, big now. Win, another big win for teams that were uh, either not ranked or were ranked lower than these other teams, and or higher than these other teams, or lower, lower than the other teams, and ended up getting a win. So, um, so a crazy day yesterday. There was uh, some good action early on, um, but obviously we want to make sure we talk about uh, our Huskers first here. Um, for those of you that are joining us right now, you know, feel free to chime in whenever you want. Um, so, Jimmy, what are your thoughts on the game? Yeah, you know, it was a similar story, at least to start the game. Uh, actually, I take that back. We had a pretty good first quarter. Um, we did. Their first drive, I mean, they moved the ball down the field, but we were able to have a red zone stop and hold them to a field goal, which was which was really good. That was a win, in my book, absolutely, right off the absolutely. bat. Which I think gave the, the defense a little bit of confidence, um, at least as far as the first quarter was concerned. Um, we uh, struggled to move the ball early on, had a lot of, a lot of three and outs and... Yeah. Stuff like that, which is just tough, especially when you see how they move the ball in the second half. It's, it's like we, we're finally able to look pretty good, but it's when we're down by too many points to come back. Exactly, yeah. I mean, so, uh, yeah, I, mean I was impressed. Uh, impressed with our defense, not so much as they drove the ball downfield, but definitely once, we, once they got in the red zone, I mean... That red zone D was solid those first couple trips that they had. Right. And that was exciting to see. And then I guess what I meant by the same similar story is we got down by, you know, a considerable amount of points. Yeah. Um, and it's just too hard to come back at that point. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And um, I mean to me it was it was what a lot of people expected. A lot of people did not expect Nebraska to win that game. Yeah, and um, and honestly I, th I think they played better than I expected them to. Yeah. And I thought the score wasn't as bad as as I thought it would be. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people were predicting, like, 30-point loss or something. I mean, we lost by 17, um, and we had a chance to close that gap late in the game, um, and then we just we failed to do so, and they ended up getting that 88-yard touchdown run. Yeah, I mean, that was huge. Um, it's still, at that point, I, I didn't think we, we were going to be able to come back to win the game. No. But 88-yard uh, run up the middle is pretty tough. That's, that's pretty tough, yeah. And you know, that's where we... That to me is where we struggled more than anything else, and where we struggled against Michigan and some of these other teams is they are running the ball up the gut. Yeah, they're not running it. They're not beating us outside all the time. They're beating us up the middle. So, I mean, in film, I hope they're seeing those are some of the big issues. So we got to get that that middle linebacker and those linebackers to really, you know, you want to contain on the outside, but how do we crunch in the middle to make them bounce outside to where we get them with those outside linebackers? Rather than they just go up the middle, we have the middle linebacker miss them, and then we have our safeties that we got to rely on to make those next tackles in the um, on the other side of the field. The way it started, like you said, you know, we we held them pretty good on that first drive, first couple, whatever you want to whatever you want to call it, was the way that it has been is teams have been able to get big plays, mm -hmm. and especially on the ground, yes. and so we weren't giving those up, so that was kind of nice to see. But then you know, as you say, the eighty-eight yard run. Um, and a few other, a few others that were uh, yes. not that big, but yeah, big, but, I mean, big enough for first downs and you know, yeah. 15, 20 yard pop, you know. Yeah, I mean they had three different running backs running the ball, and they all look good. Um, I but mean, that's... anybody behind their offensive lines is usually probably going to look pretty good, and you have yeah. a guy like Taylor, and he's going to look really good. Yeah, I mean that's and that's textbook uh, Wisconsin. We talked about it before. You stop the run game, you can beat them because you're not going to get beat by Hornibrook. Yeah, and, he, and he was bad. He he did not have a good game. Um, he was throwing a wide open receiver behind him, and he was he was able to hit a couple of those third down our third down efficiency on defense. Uh, our third down game. efficiency on offense. Yes, well, we'll talk about offense in a minute. Yes, <laughs> but on the defensive side, you know, we have a third and seven, third and eight, third and nine. For some reason, and they had a third or uh, on one of the plays, it was even a first and sixteen. It was like a first and twenty-two, or uh, a first and twenty, and then first and twenty-one, and they got twenty-two yards. Yeah, I mean that's when on third down, third and seven, third and eight. That's when your defense really needs to step up. That's when those black shirts need to step up. The captains on the defense need to step up, and we need to make those plays on defense because, I mean, really, ultimately, that they're leading the touchdowns. They're leading the points. It's not like they're leading to a first down and then we're stopping them on the next third down. We are not doing that, and that's where it's killing us. We right. got, we got, and, and, and they're not. It's like we're covering for a deep pass. Once again, Hornybrook's not going to throw you deep, but 
there was times two of the back-to-back third down conversions that they had were playing 10 to 12 yards off the guy. And he and would do a little rollout or something, or even just a quick They do a quick slant. Yeah, a yeah. quick five, six-yard slant, boom, the first down. And we've talked about this before. We talked about the last couple of years, in fact, is our corners, our, our corners do not play up and jam the guy at the line. You're allowed to do that. You got that five-yard cushion to give him a little jam at the line to where unless the ball's being thrown to him right then, it's not going to be a penalty. So we got to, on those short-yard passes, especially with Hornibrook, I mean, to me, that's a coaching decision. Well, <clears throat> Coaches have to understand that he's not going to beat you deep. Yeah. We have the speed with their or receivers. Or tr- let him try. Yeah. Let Don't him try. let him do those little ones. And kudos to him. They beat us deep, but we got to try something on those short passes to stop it because those, right. those short third down yards right. are and, killing us. And, you know, let's say you do jump in there and you get a penalty. I mean, it's going to be the same yardage as it is if, if they, they get catch a first, it. They first down and, away, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you might as well get in there and – you know, try try to knock some yeah. knock some of them away. Yeah. So I, I thought our our defense obviously we saw that was our weakness yesterday. Um, yeah. Our, our offense in the first half wasn't fantastic, but no. um, our defense we were missing a lot of tackles, um, a lot of arm tackles, a lot. When you're trying to take a guy down like Taylor, where's the one spot you don't want to tackle him at? Probably up high. The shoulder pads. Yeah. Man, we had that 88 yard run. Yeah, he bounced Boodle pretty good. Boodle came up high and he just like, bounced off him. Yeah. And um, Lamar Jackson tried to hug him. I mean, I, I don't know why Lee got taken out. I don't know if he got hurt, but Lamar Jackson was back in the game, and yeah, I thought that was a mistake. Like the one deep ball they threw was on Lamar Jackson. Yeah, and so I just I Every wish week. I wish they would have kept Lee in the game. Um, I thought he played well early on. He had and he might have got he, he might have gotten dinged up or just yeah. you know you you sub out to to have a fresh. Yeah. Set of legs in there. He, he, he has, right. and he hasn't played an entire game yet, so that could have been it. But he, he played well. He That's was hustling the ball, and they put Taylor in. Cam Taylor, man, I tell you what, back and Frost commented on him in the post game uh, and said he stepped up and came in and played some great D. He had a tackle, a good tackle on special teams. Uh, he had a really good pass breakup on a third down. Um, he Dude, was impressive. He's been playing on special teams, hasn't he? Yeah. So he's he probably has, couldn't retro. I don't, I don't think, think so. I don't think they want to. I don't think they want to. Yeah, I think he's, they want to. I think him he's to, got enough talent. He are going to see him play throughout the year. We're so going to see him a lot more. He gets quite a bit of experience. Yeah. He's pretty good the next couple of years. I, I think with, with what he did this past game, I think you're going to see him a lot more over the next few games. Maybe not full games, but you're going to see him get in a lot more, especially on pass plays, because he broke up he broke up a couple of nice passes, and I think he's got the speed and the talent to, to continue to improve that defense. Right. Um, but, I mean, overall, like I said, defense was definitely where we struggled. Yeah, um, and when we were able to start, you know, putting some points on the board, then we couldn't stop them. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, that's, and that's, yeah. that's really tough. Yeah, but, uh, but really, overall, you look at some of the stats. Um, you know, Martinez, 24 for 42, 384 yards and two TDs. He also had 57 yards rushing and one TD, so he accounted for... Over, over 440 yards of total offense. And, three touch, and all three touchdowns. And three TDs. So, um, I mean, that was impressive. Martinez had a really – if that doesn't get you excited for the next couple of years as a Husker fan, well, along with Spielman, the game that he had with 290 receiving yards and a TD, and then you had Mo Washington, he showed that he could not only run the ball, but he can catch the ball. And they were throwing that wheel route out there, and they're, they're catching on – a few that, times, and we even had one long, one or two long ones that got called back by penalties. Yeah, and man, I really wish they would change the the rule on negating penalties. When oh man, I had a discussion with somebody about this yesterday. I was you, watching the game. Man. It was BS, man. Like, okay, he gets a targeting, gets kicked out of the game. He gets the worst penalty that you can get in the game. Yes. And we have a penalty a that holding. just is is a holding penalty, and it was like, then it just. We played it at like second and six. Yeah. Well, second and seven, yeah. Or third and six, or whatever it was. It was second well, and seven, I think. Then at least give us that five yards, and then it's third and two, or second and yeah. two, or whatever. Yeah, I at least do that, or they need to have something. And this this has been going on for a couple of years now with targeting, but when you have a penalty like that, I don't think a penalty that's a 15 yard personal foul where someone gets ejected should be the same as a holding or the same as. Um, I guess anything um, on the other team. If someone gets tar- if it's a targeting penalty, it's almost like it should be a dead ball foul, no matter what. And uh, that that fifteen yards gets tacked on, no matter what. I, I just I think the guys just to change that. And not to mention, it should be a first down. 
Even yeah. if you call our 10 yards. So maybe we don't get as many yards. It should be a first down. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, Drew mentions UCF uh, defense always giving up big yards. And, but they want a turnover battle. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that a lot of people were scared about with bringing on the defensive coordinator, uh, Schneider, with uh, Frost is because they did give up a lot of yards and sometimes yeah. they gave up a lot of points, but they scored more points, for one. Right. And, yes, the turnover battle was big. We did and get a turnover yesterday. We got a fumble recovery, which I actually was a really good play by Boodle. Oh, yeah, that, that was awesome. That was awesome. Um, but, yes, we, we have to commit those turnovers. We have to we have to learn how to knock that ball out. They – if they come in with the hand, guys are coming in with a hammer. We're not doing that because we're trying to tackle well, the shoulders. Well, and another thing you think, I mean, they weren't playing power five opponents every week either. No. And they were giving up a lot of yards and a lot of points. Yes. And I know that we've talked about that, and a lot of people have mentioned that. Uh, I mean, Big Ten, it's big, big uglies and running the ball. Yep. And so it's not, you're not getting all kinds of interceptions like, like you did. And yeah, so we got to get fumbles. We got to do yeah. something to cause fumbles. Quarterback draws back once again. We didn't go out, get a lot of pressure on Hornibrook. And when we did, when we had when he had to move out of the pocket, that's when those really bad passes came into play where oh, it, there was ugly. But there was one. we have to continue that pressure. It was front. third down. It's like third and seven, and we should have had a sack. Oh, we had yeah. Somebody wrapped him up. Down. And they got the first down. And then the next play, they ran like a 20 yard touchdown. Yeah. And it was like, man, if we just would have stopped him there, <laughs> we probably would have. With the sack, they probably would have punted. Yeah. But you flip the script just that easy and yeah, they scored a easy. touchdown. I mean, and that, that just goes to show to me, I mean, we are that close. Mm -hmm. We are not only on defense. Yes, defense did not look great yesterday, but uh, we're not going to look great against the Jonathan Taylor. He He's good. We and actually, we did. In the first half, we, we only the first had half. like 65 yeah. yards. Yeah, so, and so that just goes to show. Leading like, rusher in college football. <laughs> Jason, cheers, buddy. Hey, you should tune in, Jason. I got I got a little uh, nugget for you later, but it's late in the show. <laughs> Jason's uh, uh, his bears are on by this week, so yeah. he's anyway. Um, anyway, so I, I think there's a lot of positives to take away from that game. Um, and if people don't see the future of Nebraska and these young guys that are coming up with Cam Taylor, with Mo Washington, uh, with Adrian Martinez, with Mike Williams on the outside as a wide receiver, and JD Spielman. Mike, Mike yeah. Williams had a couple pass recep uh, receptions as well. Cade Warner, Jack Stoll. Uh, there was a lot of good things in that game to take away. Woodyard. Woodyard. I mean, we have so much yeah, of it's that just, talent coming up. It is. They, just all, have, they just all need to get some experience. we got to get the experience. we got to get that development. we, we got to get the get weight some, room. We need to get some O-line and um, some defense. <laughs> so, talk about it. So, I mentioned, yeah, I threw up something on Twitter yesterday because I was really pissed. Um, the refs. I thought the refs had a really terrible first half. Um, we got calls that were against us that weren't that weren't penalties, and we got calls that were. Um, they called a block in the back that was pretty. That was pretty. I, I never saw it. Yeah, oh, it had a hand on the back, oh, maybe, but there was no. No, block it, in the, the hand the hand was on his back. So the guy was coming down. He's coming down the left side. Our guy's coming this way, or no, he was coming this way. Our guy's coming here. And the guy was already falling down, and our guy kind of turned around like this. Yeah, that's what he did. He didn't touch him. He didn't. He didn't put it. He didn't touch him at all. But they called the block in the back, and he was trying to avoid it at all costs. And that was huge because that was a big run back too. Well, so then we're at the five yard line, and then we and, did get go ninety five yards for a TD though. Yeah, which was good. Which was good, but still, a longer field took more time off the clock. Too. Yeah, um, um, and I, I mean, especially with how he was last week after the game, and how upset yes. he was about Special players teams, being undisciplined. Yeah. That was not um, an undisciplined foul. He not. was not that way last night, after the game last mm -hmm. night, even though they had just about the same amount of penalties for the same amount of yards. Well, and, and he's not talking anything about the rest, but that's, he, he's not really allowed to. We can, though. He's not going to bash the rest like a lot of people might. But And it, rightfully so, because well, that'll only backfire. Well, and it's, it's not going to make a difference. Game's over. Yeah, They're exactly. not going to change their mind. Uh, the face mask on Stanley Morgan. Blatantly obvious. Almost took his head off. The ref was it right was, there. It, was a, it should have been targeting He's tackled around no, no, the legs. No, 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 not that, that one. No, no, it was okay. a play before that. Um, it was. Oh, when he got, yeah, he had his helmet. He had his face Some mask. of the people were like, "Oh no, I think he got it like around the helmet." No. Or so. And they showed the replay, and I'm like, "If his like pinky hand is like, or his pinky finger is like right here, that's around his face mask." They'll, they'll call it a face mask if you yank him by the head. They will call it a face mask, and it definitely was a face mask. Um, so Drew mentions very optimistic. Um, yeah, absolutely, much more than the past three games. Frost mentioned that. Uh, after last week, it was kind of a turning point. He felt like it was a turning point uh, after Purdue game. 
not only did we have two guys leave, but a lot of the players were like, I think it brought us closer together. For sure. They're starting to see these are the guys that want to be here. These are um, the guys that are supposed to be good. Yes. And either they're not working hard enough or they're not working hard enough. Yeah. Okay, to me, yeah. that's all I see. Yeah. And they mentioned they're it more not, than once. We want the guys that want to be here and want to play. So let's go, let's go back to the penalty. So okay, Sam Morgan had the face mask. They missed that. That was huge because um, that was the third down stop, I believe. Um, and we ended up getting a field goal, if I remember correct. Oh. It, was down, it was down yeah. there end of the field. Okay. Sounds right. Um, and then on the next position that we had, Stanley Morgan catches the ball. He's got one guy wrapped up. He's, he's kind of pulling him down. And two more guys come in. Guy leads with his head right into his helmet. That's technical targeting. I was like, I thought he got hurt. Well, and he, and he, he threw, was pissed. He threw that. his legs up and was pissed and yelling at the ref. Rightfully so. I mean, those are the kind of things he that really you got it. Well, for one, refs need, they need to blow the whistle. The guy's down. He's not yeah. going anywhere. The guys already got him toward, on the ground, and they know he's one. They know he's who he is. Yeah, and two more guys come in, so the rest missed that. And Frost was heated on that too. He was pissed. Oh, and Morgan was frustrated throughout the game. Um, every time he'd catch a pass, he'd get you know go out of bounds or whatever. They were, they were, hit, they were hitting him late or, yeah. or giving him some shots, and he was he was not having it. Yeah, I mean he got he got shoved. Uh, he got hit. Right as he went out of bounds or shoved, and another guy came in and jumped and landed on him. They didn't call anything idea. there. Um, so that those kind of things are frustrating when we're getting all the penalty calls, and then you see the other team doing things that aren't getting called. Um, so we had that block in the back penalty. We had the holding on Foster when Mo Washington ran all the way to the left and came back to the right. They called a hold on Foster. That's what it was. That's that wasn't a hold either. Yeah. And even so, Kevin Kugler is one of those guys that he's not. He doesn't favor Nebraska. He's kind of a dick to a lot of teams, but he definitely doesn't like Nebraska. Um, but even him and the other guy, I wish it was Matt Millen, but um, both those guys are like, I didn't really see much there. I mean, every penalty that was not called or that was called that shouldn't have been or should have against Nebraska, even the guys in the booth, again, last night, just like last week, they're like, I, I didn't see anything. I don't, know what, I don't know what to call on. And so, or, oh, they missed, oh, they missed a hold on Wisconsin there. <laughs> Um, yeah, I and mean, that was Cam Taylor they called the block in the back on, which, which I said, you know, definitely wasn't. Um, so I just, I, I feel like, I don't know, but once you have that, that stigma of, hey, you guys have a lot of selfish penalties and you're undisciplined, I feel like that's why we're getting more penalties, because they feel like, oh, that should probably be a hole, I'm going to throw a flag. Yeah, right, yeah, it's pretty, pretty difficult to watch. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and the ref. Yeah, so if someone mentioned this, too, the ref looked like he was about laughing every time he called a penalty. Um, to me, that's just unprofessional. Um, and that just goes to show, like, man, you got money on this game or something, or you got money uh, in your back pocket, because that was definitely not a – that was a one-sided game. They had three penalties to our ten at some point. And it's like, man, it should be – if we have ten penalties, that's fine, but they don't have three. Yeah. Um, if they, you're calling it a certain way, then there's going to be calls. Both teams are going to have a lot of penalties. That's it. I always feel like games should be pretty even. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like, especially, at, especially like at one point we had more yards. We might have even ended with more yards I think we, than they I think did. We did. The eighty-eight yard touchdown might not help that situation. At that point, we were still ahead of them. Um, we had more yards than that, and yeah. And don't get me wrong. I mean, they played better than us and they won the game. Yeah. But I would think that the penalties would be about the about the same. Oh yeah, and that's the thing. It just. Yeah, we did cover the spread. That, that I bet. Um, <laughs> a lot of people said that. But it, it, was, it was really frustrating um, because it, there were some plays where I saw our guys being held at the line. But here's the difference between what I've seen in our defensive line and what I see on other te teams' defensive line on holding calls. And we talked about this right before we started the show. Is they're pulling away from those holds so the ref can see it. You see our guys getting held, and they continue to push forward or try to push forward instead of moving left or right, trying to hack an arm down. They're just they're being held, and that's all it is. So the ref's not going to call it unless they are actually trying to move towards the ball or right. make an extra move. And that's I think that's where you know Wisconsin had some holds on us. But if we're not trying to sell it, not not acting, but if we're not trying to sell it and move out of the way to go, uh, keep attacking the ball, it's going to kill us. Well, and if you move right or left, I mean, yeah, and maybe you're not quite getting held, but you do, and then exactly they have to pull you down or whatever. Yeah. So we still, we still got guys that are young on that defensive line. They're going to grow into those types of, uh, those types of plays. Um, but one, one bright side on the defensive line is when Foster ran down that dude um, on the little screen. I'm trying to think what. Oh, yeah, yeah. When, yeah I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it took he, me a second. Man, he, or was it, was it Foster? No. It was, uh, um, it was one of the Davis boys. 
Yeah, yeah Davis, it was Davis, Carlos was, Davis. Yeah. Carlos Davis ran down, ran him down from behind. Yes. I mean, definitely not the faster guy, but he pulled off his block as fast as he could when he saw that pass going. And he was able to chase, I was impressed. He chased him down. That is yeah. the kind of fight that Scott Frost wants to see every week from everybody on the team is, you know what, I may not be the faster guy, but I'm going to do my best to chase you down. And and he did. And that was, that was a fantastic play. Um, yeah, no, there's – they're definitely – that's why I thought it was funny when after the Michigan game they said, you know, guys are giving up. I, I really don't think that is. I just think that I think Michigan players are talking shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that, you know, we might not have the same level of talent everywhere. Yeah. We do have a lot of talent, especially on offense. Yes. But we need to get some guys in here. And we've talked about it too. Especially like, you know, the offensive line. Everybody's hating on the offensive line. I'm hating on the offensive line. Yeah. But the Far- offense, Farni- the, the, Farniak is Far- he's, he's, he's our a weak really, point. really rough game. He's our weak but point. But these guys they we need guys to come in that are gonna they run up tempo in high yeah. school or yep. are conditioned for that. Yeah. And the guys that we have are not. Yeah, and, and Farniak had a really bad game yesterday. He's actually had a pretty decent year. He's definitely not one of our best linemen, but he's one of those guys who's going to fight and play hard every game. But he just he had a really bad you game. You can tell that, that the guys are. Um, just because they're not – just because you're getting beat on a play doesn't mean you're not trying hard. So, yeah, so, so Patrick Patrick thinks that uh, it's time for 0-6, unfortunately, against Northwestern. So uh, not so fast. I mean, I think – Open up as an 8.5-point underdog on the, the road. We listen, have not lost to Northwestern. Knock on wood. We have not lost to Northwestern at Northwestern, so we joined yeah. the big time. It's true, and so the only thing I have to combat that with is Thorson can run, but that's not his first option. And and running this year, after having surgery last year in the offseason, he hasn't been a threat to run the ball like he has been in the past. He is a passer. He threw for over 300 yards yesterday. He actually had a really good game uh, in their win yesterday over Michigan State. He threw about 300, right. 370 yards, Man, 340 like, some yards. Yeah, they they played pretty well the last two weeks. But but they hadn't played very well before that, so I feel like exactly. they're up and down. I, I feel like you just never know what you're going to get. Um, and they're one of those teams that sometimes does not play up to their potential, or sometimes play down to the other team's level. Um, and you're playing Nebraska, you know we're going to come in with some some fight. Well, and these are always close games. Oh yeah. These are, always, these are always like the closest game we have every year. We need, we need a Ron Kellogg 2.0 next week. <laughs> um, I, I think it's going to... I'll stick with Adrian. He's good. I think... Uh, but, yeah. They, they have some fast guys on defense. I think we're going to be able to run the ball okay on them. Uh, in fact, we ran the ball fine last night. We actually averaged uh, almost six yards per carry. But we got down to the point where it's like a 90 points. And they had a younger secondary. So he's like, we're, we're going to keep throwing on the secondary. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I don't blame him for that. It was but. interesting um, with how Zigbo played last week. He only had one carry for five yards in the first half. Yeah. And you know, what did you say? He only had, he had five, five carries for 29 yards. So And Mo was five for 27. I thought we'd run a little bit more because we were able to find some gaps. It was here and there. But we, I, think we, I think we just, our offensive line against their defensive line, we kind of knew that we're not always going to be very successful on these runs. Yeah, and Martinez did keep it quite a bit on the read option. He, he had over, he had uh, fifty-seven yards rushing in the TD. So I mean, yeah, he did keep it a lot. So I think once again, a lot of bright spots. Uh, next week, though, we might have to rely a little bit more on our passing again. Um, For sure, their secondary is one of those secondaries that you can pick on, especially when you got guys like Spielman, Williams, and Morgan. Then you got Stoll, Woodward, and uh, Warner that you throw in there. We got plenty of firepower on the offensive side to throw to, uh, and you mix in some running, and you mix in some Washington out of the backfield. Exactly, I think we can be successful. And the the defense, once again, I'm always optimistic. We always are. Our our defense, right. our corners, and coverage, they've been good this year. We yeah, have we have not we have not been beat a ton it, on our corner series. Right, and it's like the times that they are beat, other than Lamar Jackson getting beat deep. I was just gonna say it's Lamar Jackson. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's either Lamar Jackson or the times that it has been, it's just come at like a very inopportune time. Yes. So like the Colorado game, Boodle has Boodle's has been playing great, but he gets burned one play, yep. and it's for a touchdown that wins the game. Yeah, you know, but, not not his fault, but we all, all kinds of other factors, you know, drop passes and different things. Martinez getting hurt. Yep. So, but we we've seen improvement from the D core, from the defensive back core uh, in the last few games, and I think Aaron uh, William Aaron Williams is great. Um, Boodle is good. Reed is good. He had a stupid ass celebration yesterday when he didn't actually make a tackle. Uh, that was one of those things where he, he was being selfish. And he didn't you know make what? It, he didn't I, make an arm. I tackle. wasn't sure, but we were all like, 
take his ass out of the game. Yeah, we were mad. I don't care if he's playing yeah. better than whoever's behind him. Yeah. Take him out. But but you got Cam Taylor that I think is going to play more next week. You got Lee Jr. I think is going to play more next week. Um, just keep Lamar Jackson out of there. I don't care. They're going to pick you on know, him. But I think our defensive back, the, the people that are in defensive back and the guys that are going to come in like Cam Taylor, there's talent there. And I don't, I don't think – Thorson is good. But I think we have we have guys that can match their wide receivers. I think um, one thing that did hurt a little bit this week, and you know, Dedrick Young is a starter, but I think Will Honus has been playing better. Yes, but he's out. He's for out the season. season. And if we had him and Barry in there as the mm-hmm. linebackers, you probably you get, don't see that eight-yard touchdown run. Yeah. Well, and I feel like Gifford and me and my brother. But we gotta have. Sorry, we gotta have. Uh, well, almost for two more years. Yes. My, yeah, my brother sure. commented on this, uh, we were talking about yesterday, is, is Gifford in the wrong spot on that defense? Is he... Because he's really good. He's really, But you don't see him that often. I you know. See, so I think maybe... I think Barry's middle linebacker, right? Yeah. Maybe Barry moves to the outside and Gifford moves the middle linebacker. Maybe. I mean, maybe that's something that they toy with because Gifford is definitely very skillful, but in the outside linebacker position, we're not seeing a lot of him. Well, and he could be more like a Will Compton as a, as a middle linebacker. Yes. And then... Mohamed Barry could be more like Levante David as yes. an outside linebacker. Yes. So call him Prowse, dude. <laughs> I'll give him a call. See what he says. Um, Diedrich, Diedrich Young. Diedrich Young does. The, so he had a rough game. He's he's not been playing great. Um, Mohamed Barry is still the best player on yes. defense. And him, on the him, other side, him, Boodle and Williams, top three yeah. guys. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, a lot of positive things to take away from that game, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Um, Frost has some really good comments. Uh, we'll get to the Greg Bell and, and Tyjon Lindsay here in a second. Um, Frost, if one of the first things he says, I'm proud of this team. You know, because they kept playing, they fought hard. Um, he likes to use the word that they battled. Um, absolutely. I mean, they look good. Martinez, he said, you know, Martinez made freshman mistakes. And that's one thing I like about Frost and the staff is they're going to call players out. And not necessarily sure. in a negative way, but they're going to point out what they can improve on. And they don't care if the media knows it. Cause that's how you learn. It. So... Said he made freshman mistakes. He still had a good game, but there was mistakes that he made. Uh, a couple, he took a sack for like a six or seven yard loss again. Um, he almost had three picks in the game that was thrown right to the guys. He threw across his body once. That was a poor throw. He missed a wide open Stanley Morgan. He made some mistakes, but got to got to be reminded he didn't play his senior year. So he is a freshman. He's had not played in a year and a half, and he looks pretty damn good. Too. And he looks good. So a lot of bright spots. Stoll had that touchdown catch. That he's like, <laughs> that was give me that ball. I mean, that, that, that could have been a breakup. He said, nope, my ball. Uh, but he still, he missed a couple blocks, so Frost made, made sure to point that out. And maybe, maybe that's why, you know, those those tight ends aren't getting the ball. Because I feel like we could be throwing the tight ends more. But yeah. maybe they're not getting as much. Maybe they, we do need them in the block, you know, in there to block. Yeah. Because the, the O-line is... Struggling, whatever. Anyway. Yeah, so I, I think we're going to get the, we're gonna see more involvement in the tight ends uh, to come. Um, but Frost said, you know what? Guess what? They're better than we are right now. We didn't execute well. Definitely are. They're better than us. We knew that going into the game. But he did mention, once again, no dumb or selfish penalties. There really wasn't. We didn't have a lot of – we didn't have any of those personal fouls that were dumb and stupid. No late hits out of bounds. Right. They had some penalties calling us that weren't really penalties. So um, he was proud of that. He said, you know, we played against veterans on their offensive and defensive line, and we got young dudes that are playing. So when you look at that and the way we did play, I mean, he was happy. He was proud of the way they played. Um, he did. He talked about Cam Taylor. He said Cam Taylor stepped up, uh, and we're going to see more and more of him. Um, yes. He said we're on the road to a better place, and by God, I mean, after yesterday's game, I had a lot of optimism. There's a lot of times, you know, I get so critical during the games, but – you go back, you look at how we did in that game, and there's a lot of bright spots that yeah. make you think there is a I lot of good s- things to come. I will say that this year, you get that, that feeling in you after the game, especially like after the Michigan game, you, mm-hmm. you just get killed, and you're just like, man. Or, you know, you let one get away, like Colorado or Troy. Yeah. yeah. And Even Purdue last week, I still kind of had the feeling. I didn't really feel that after yeah. the game. I felt pretty good. Yeah. And that sucks to kind of say that like, you feel that way after a loss. Like, I'm not... I'm not happy with yeah. that but, by any means. Yeah, but well, we've lost to teams with a combined record of twenty-two and six. Exactly. Um, so I mean, you can't be, you can be upset about it, but really, the teams that we're losing to, I mean, excuse me, Colorado's in the top twenty. They're undefeated. Michigan's in the top fifteen. Um, Troy isn't, but yeah. Wisconsin's in the top fifteen. Troy only has one loss. Yeah, but you got Wisconsin in the top fifteen. So you got teams. We're not losing to slack teams. 
That's the thing. Um, it sucks. It still sucks, but yeah, it definitely. We, sucks. We've seen we saw improvement yesterday, and I think that's something that this this team is going to be confident and build off of going into Northwestern. Northwestern just had a high off of beating Michigan State, um, who was ranked number twenty. And they were beating Michigan seventeen nothing the week before, so they were. So they need, they're no slack team. Yeah. We're gonna have to come prepared and build off of the positive. We definitely need to show up yeah. early. But you know, and Elicio says you know our defense was on the field a lot. That's I, true too. That's it. I would agree with that. They were because we did look good on offense, but we also did have a lot of three and outs. Mm-hmm. And you put that defense right back on the field, and they have an offensive line like Wisconsin does, and they just wear you down. Yeah, and that, and that's how Wisconsin wins games, though. That's yeah. And it doesn't. That's matter. their formula to win games. It does. It doesn't matter how much three, how many three ounce their defense has. Really, it doesn't matter who was on the other side. That's how they wear teams down, and that's they do a good job of it. And, and they're able yesterday. to do it against most teams, other than like Ohio State, because yes, Ohio State will won't have three and outs. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so Frost was asked about Greg Bell and Tajon Lindsay, and I thought his response was just, it was great. He said, he said, you know what, I wish those boys well. Um, they asked about them around the weight room. He said, I think the guys are closer now. Um, they're a little more confident. Um, and he said, that's about all I should say right now is I wish these boys well. So you can tell he's not happy about it, but you can also tell there's probably a reason why they left, and he's okay with it. Um, and my reaction to Greg Bell leaving, Tajon Lindsay, listen, he – he wasn't doing much when he had the chance to do something anyways. Right. Um, he, and he's he's one of those guys. He, he's going to Oregon State now. Good um, luck in 2020 because so, you got to sit out a season so and the end two-thirds. So he's going to go play with Trish and Jebbia. They're buddy-buddy. They were friends. Um, Mike Riley recruited them both. So I'm not 100%. I'm not that and surprised. And Avery Roberts. Yeah, I'm not that surprised. That, that whole recruiting guys class left. basically from 2017 is. That's fine. They, if you're not, if they don't believe in it, you know, he said that we weren't, be, we weren't using them to, or no. Greg Bell said we weren't using him to his full potential. Greg Bell was mad because he got sat, and he was the second string running back now. I'll tell you what. You really want to? You really are mad that a guy came in and ran for 170 yards when you had five touches for like six yards? You're mad about that. And let's 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 take a step back here. You were the starter for the first three games of the season. First game, he fumbled on the first drive. Yes. Killed the drive. Killed the ten yard line, five yard line. Uh, in the red zone, whatever it was. Um. You got stopped on fourth and one or fourth and two four, or three four, times. Fourth and one, you got stopped on three or four times this yep. season. Um, and you have a freshman like Maurice Washington that's going to get a lot of playing time. He's fat. He's faster. There was one of those plays where Greg... And a guy like Devine Zigbo that's a senior that has the experience and has a lot of heart and just... He pounds. Pounds. Ground and pound. So, I mean... Yeah, and so you know, Nick said Nick Zom says he's overhyped. He was overhyped. He was. Dude, he was. I, mean, thought, the, I thought he was going to come in and blow... Blow yeah. things away. And it's listen, what they were talking about. So, so you got him and Mo Washington, two guys that came in. Greg Bell, the JUCO transfer. Mo Washington, the true freshman. Mo Washington didn't even he didn't get here till the fall. He didn't get here until like two weeks before yeah. the first game. And so no weight room, no practices with the Maybe. team. No, he had some weight room, but in some practices with the team, but not like Greg Bell did. And look what he's been able to do this season compared to what Greg Bell did. Yeah. Greg Bell, uh, if Zigbo had uh, more rushing yards. Uh, than Bell did in the previous four games. Right. In that one, in game. one game. So y- playing I mean, against the same team. And you're gonna be mad that he's playing against you're gonna be mad. Like that that's those are the kind of people that Frost and staff do not want. If you're not gonna fight and battle for your job, get the hell out. We don't want you. And best of luck to you, you absolutely. Know what? But I mean not that's just stupid. Maybe, you're already a Juco. You know, it's probably pretty tough for Lindsay when you have when you have Stanley Morgan and JD Spielman. They're obviously one two. Yep. They're gonna be. You're not. You're not gonna jump those guys. Yeah, but I also heard that Tajon Lindsay didn't want to be that. Um, uh, what are they called? The duck. I think it's like oh, a slot guy. Oh yeah. He he didn't want to be the duck. Why not? Yeah. He didn't want did to. Be you, the you, duck. Did you watch Frost team last year? He wanted to be the outside. He wanted to be the outside guy. He wanted to be a. Did Morgan you watch UCF student. last year? Did yeah. you see how they dished the ball around? Yep. And yeah. not only that, but they put you back there as the punt returner when they could have put Maurice Washington. They could have put J.D. Spielman, Stanley Morgan. They put you back there, mainly because of your speed. Yep. And don't get me wrong, special teams is not great. But make mistakes. You have fumble against Michigan that would have gone to the house mm-hmm. with not the rule. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, we'll, like, we'll see. Yeah. Just good I mean, luck, Greg, I guess. Bell, good like, luck to yeah. those guys. I'm not going mean, to say yeah. anything bad about them. But yeah. well, I, not that just, I already have To it. me, it's just you're, you're a baby. I mean, you lose your, you lose your number one spot. 
I'm sorry, Scott Frost is not an offense that runs it's like running back. It's not a one running back system. We have to, we need three, four, five running backs in that system. Right. And look at Mo Washington. Uh, we talked about catching the damn ball yesterday. That was impressive. I loved it. He yeah. lined up as a wide out with as they go in the backfield. I know. I mean, it was great. Um, so yeah, yeah they'll, they'll I never mentioned the 26, 22 and six combined record in five games. Um, Alicio mentioned they'll get the guys out that don't belong. You know, and that's the thing. And, and these coaches aren't aren't telling them to leave. They're not saying you're not playing or you're you need to go. They're still trying to work on some of those guys, I think. And I think we saw we saw some of that yesterday, of the guys that believe and the guys are going to play hard and battle. And some of those guys like Cam Taylor, Mo Washington, Adrian Martinez, those are the, Jack Stoll. Um, those are the guys that are going to come out and play for you and play hard. Those Cade are guys, Warner. Those are the guys that love football. The, the, obviously, if these guys are getting in the game, like Cade Warner or uh, Cam Taylor, oh, yeah. they're working hard in practice. Like. I'm not saying that the other guys aren't working hard in practice, yeah. but they are showing something mm -hmm. enough that Scott Frost is like, all right, I can roll with this guy. Yeah, yeah. And so I trust this guy to get me. Exactly, yeah. And that's, that's the thing. If we have to change the depth chart we to get those to guys in there. And he did. Get a whole team of those. Yeah, and I think, I, like think I think they're doing the right things up front and, and on that uh, coaching squad. Um, Nick, you mentioned uh, Farniak, number 71. I, we talked about him. Um, oh yeah, God. he did have four. He had four penalties. Um, I think for a combined 30, 40 or forty five yards in those four penalties. So because four, I think four of them, three of them were holds, and one of them I think was a hands in the, the face. face. Um, so yeah, 45, 45 yards in penalties for him that kills you. So he, that's probably why Frost wasn't too upset. Like not yeah, really talking discipline. Yeah, but that that was one of wise. that was one of the first things I said to uh, Adam Carricker. He asked like, what what do you guys think so far in the game? Uh, and I said, get number seventy one out. Who can we put in? Like, it's not that, once again, it's not that he's not working hard. He doesn't have the footwork. He doesn't have the speed. He doesn't have the talent. He just he doesn't. I think I think he can get there. But man, you got to get his ass in the weight room. He's got to do something different. Because he's not. He was right. he was touted as a freshman to be this really good kid uh, and really good football player, but I'm not, I don't I'm not seeing it. What I think he was a rally recruit. What? Um, but I'm not seeing it. So do you know what he is? Is he like a sophomore or something? Or? I think he's a sophomore. I think he's a sophomore. I mean, he's got time. So he's still he's got, got time, time but, develop, but right now you're in your second year, you, and you're still committing the same penalties you committed last year. True. I mean, he he's not. And if you watch him next game. On the right side, the way he moves his feet, he's he's a step behind everybody. He's not getting to the guy on the outside. So I don't know if they're gonna say, you know, hey, we got some. We might not have that depth. I don't know. If we don't Probably have the depth, don't. if we don't have the depth, then the we might line. not be able to get get rid of him or get him off the line at least as a starter. Um, so I mean, like I said, we lose by seventeen. We covered the spread. We're playing teams that have a good record. We've seen positives across the board on offense and on defense. Uh, defense struggled yesterday with 370 yards rushing against us. Another 200-plus yeah, yard rusher against Nebraska. One, one long play kind of kind of changes the, the narrative on that, if, uh, if you will, because yeah. we actually didn't, didn't play that bad. But. Yeah, and, and that's the th as, it, there, there are a lot of things you can take away, but this is the sixth year in a row that Wisconsin has beat us. Um, we just can't seem to find a way, and they do put up rushing yards. And Melvin Gordon had 400 some yard rushing yards against us. Um, Taylor last two years. We Monte just, Ball. Monte Ball. I mean, we we can't seem to figure out their run game, but their offensive line is, is really good, and we we got to yeah. find a way. And maybe this year's the last year. Maybe yeah, it is. <laughs> hopefully. I mean, it is going to be a couple years as as, as a whole, mm -hmm. but. I would like to, to get one from Wisconsin yep. sooner than later. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's all I really got. I mean, uh, the Huskers, you know, I, once again, I'm extremely Shoot, optimistic. I didn't even think we talked that much about the Huskers. <laughs> it's been quite <laughs> Yeah, anyway. anyway. 40 minutes. So, anyways, uh, keep, jo keep joining in. Ask questions if you feel like. We're going to move on to the rest of Saturday. Seven ranked teams lost. First game, 11 o'clock, Red River Showdown. It was Texas, awesome. Oklahoma. It was awesome. I mean, that game... Something where I, I think Ellinger is a junior, right? I'm not I'm not entirely sure. I remember seeing him as a freshman, and I thought, man, this kid is just not having a good year, but he's got potential to be good. Right. He played. He he's he was grown awesome. into his position. So, the the best way I would say to describe this game, the, they go to Tom Herman right after the game, 
and he says, well, that was a heck of a college football game right there, huh? And yes. that's exactly what it was. I, that's, it was the yeah, best game exactly. of the day. Um, Oklahoma was down by 21 points with yeah. like seven minutes left. They were down three points going into the fourth quarter. They were down three touchdowns? Yep, they were yeah. down 21. It was 45-24 at that point. Yeah. And yeah. Kyler Murray is pretty... It's pretty incredible. He's got he's got nothing to hang his head about. I mean, he was yeah. he was obviously upset at the end of the game, um, but I mean, hell of a game. I mean, both sides of the ball. I mean, it was fun to watch. Like, I, I couldn't stop watching that game. I don't like either team, but I definitely don't like either I, team. I mean, I said last week, and I think the week before, like, get out of here. Texas isn't back, but Texas I might mean, be back. They, they were really <laughs> kicking themselves. They lost back. that first game to Maryland. I, I'm yeah. not sure how they did that, but but they they move up to number nine in the standings. They uh, jumped ten I, spots. And I think rightfully so. I mean, they're four and one. Or five, five, five and one. And one. Um, I, they deserve to be there after yeah, some of the games they've had. At this point, I would say they're the favorite to win the Big Twelve. I think those two that teams are going to. I think those two teams are going to play each other again in the Big Twelve championship. West Virginia, yes, they're still undefeated. I don't think that they're as good. They struggled with Kansas. Will Greer struggled with Kansas yesterday. No one. Like and maybe they, maybe they just had a maybe they had a down. Everyone you know, has a little down. They had a but, down week playing a pretty weak opponent. Um, but I think we'll see that this. This same game again. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't see the same energy. And I kind of hope that we do. With Texas and Oklahoma, watching the, I've watched both those teams more than once this year, and watching them play compared to watching uh, West Virginia, there's a different, there's a different feel yeah. in the air. I mean, there was some really good defense in that game too, but the offenses are both stellar. So I, I that'll be interesting to see how the rest of the Big Twelve. Well, plays and out. I said, I said, I texted you, and I said to a couple other people, I said, man, I hope in a few years that. You know, we see like Nebraska versus Texas in the playoffs. Yeah. And somebody, it was Kyle, he was like, I hate Texas. I don't want to do that. And I'm like, yeah, but you go to the playoff and play them and then you beat them. Yeah. And then it's just it's that much sweeter. Uh, yeah. You know? And my, my uh, Pootie was cheering on uh, Texas yesterday. I'm like, dude, that's blasphemy. Like, you don't cheer on Texas. You don't cheer on Oklahoma either, but you don't cheer for Texas. Like, Oklahoma's a rival. Honestly, Texas was like one of those hated teams. I wasn't really sure who I was for. Uh, I kind of wanted it to go to overtime just be, yeah. you know, because I didn't have really anybody that I was cheering but, for. I think I took Texas in my pick em, So, But hats off to Dicker, the kicker, <laughs> for nailing that, that field goal to win the game. I mean, and even the the uh, the lady asking questions after the game uh, to her, and she's like, "I'm waiting to say this. How about Dicker the kicker?" Like she was so excited to say it. And I just I started laughing. I'm like, man, the chick is so excited to say Dicker. The that kicker. dude will probably end up being like the next the next Justin Tucker. He he had man. They showed like a, a picture of him before he went on the field. The smirk on his face. He was like, "Got this." Like, yeah. Just, um, he was so he was excited about it. Um, let's see. Yeah, it'd be great to see Texas. Kentucky lost, yeah. So Kentucky was one of the losers yesterday, um, and Kentucky lost to unranked A and M. So A and M jumps back in with two losses. They're four and two. They're in the top twenty-five. Which right. guess what? It doesn't matter from here on out. The only thing that matters right now is going to be the top ten. Right. I think that's the only thing we have to worry about as far as who's going to make the playoff. And this top ten doesn't even matter because when these playoff rankings come out, UCF is not going to be ranked number ten, even though they probably should be. Probably. They will probably be in the fourteen to seventeen range. I'm gonna challenge you on that one. I think they'll be. I think they they'll be, might even be closer to twenty. They, I think they'll be ten. I'm gonna challenge you. I guess on that there one. is a lot of teams that have lost. That have a loss. Yes, but. I, I think I'll challenge you on that. But All right, they we'll are see. one of the remaining. What's that? A couple they weeks are the, right? one of the remaining eleven teams that are undefeated. Um, so yes, Kentucky loses to AM. They held Snell. Snell wasn't able to run the ball it's very bad. well. I kind of like Snell. I kind of like seeing Kentucky Snell, yeah. well. Snell, yeah. Snell, yeah. Um, yeah, so Big 12, yeah, based around Texas, um, you know, I think I think Texas, they the Big 12 needs Texas and Oklahoma to both do well. A West Virginia is not going to carry the Big 12. It's just not going to happen year after year. Texas and Oklahoma are going to do that. And Texas being back, now you have that Texas-Oklahoma showdown. And even TCU, I think, needs to get back to that. Yeah, um, they kind of dropped off They dropped year. off, you know, this um, year, this year. But. I would say... The only, one of the things I think that could hurt, especially if Texas is back, the thing, <laughs> back. That, the thing that could hurt them, that hurt the Big 12, is that Texas and Oklahoma play every year, and then Texas and Oklahoma play again in the championship. One beats one the first time, and then yep. the other one wins the second time. Yes. Yeah. 
So true. Yeah, and Texas is the only team that has their own network. Absolutely. Mm. But with them it's struggling, point, with them struggling the last couple of years, I just don't think it's it's been a big deal. But with them being back, I think that's huge. Um, Florida number twenty two. Florida beat LSU. Now we know this wasn't going to be a high scoring game. 27-19, Florida takes down LSU. And it was 20-19, to 19, but they got, what, like a fumble recovery pick six or a fumble recovery uh, touchdown right at the end? I think it was a fumble. Um, a fumble recovery for a touchdown late. Oh, no, it was 20-19, to 19, yeah, they got a pick. It was a pick, yeah, six. pick six to yeah, win the game. Okay. Um, so. But, yeah, so it was, I mean, that was a good game. Florida ends up playing up to that LSU defense, or defense and offense. They did well enough to win the game. Um, and it won in the swamp. The swamp's a hard place to play. Cool. You're SEC. You got three teams that are so Florida, two lost teams in the top twenty-five. Florida moves up to number fourteen in the standings. Uh, Michigan squeaked away with uh, or sorry, Miami, number seventeen, squeaked away with a win over Florida State. That was a twenty-eight twenty-seven win. I mean, they almost lost to Florida State. That was the biggest I, difference. Turnover margin. They had two turnovers that think, helped them win that game. I think Miami is. Not nearly where they were at last year. No, well, that's, they started number eight to start the season. They lose to LSU. LSU jumps from twenty-five to like twelve. 12. They jump thirteen spots or twenty-four to twelve. Something like that. They jump twelve spots up to yeah, the up to the top fifteen. Stupid. And then they win again. Uh, they beat Auburn. Then they're in the top six. I mean, that's those. That's kind of how these rankings go. And I, I mentioned it yesterday. Watch, you're gonna have Florida and Texas in the top ten and. Florida's not too far out, but I knew Texas would jump in there to at, at least at number nine honestly, with, with the teams that lost. Honestly, I could say they have these two lost teams in the rankings or whatever. There's another, like, five new teams in. Yeah. I would probably, and I hate, I mean, I hate to say this, but <laughs> I would put Iowa in the top 25 over these some of these two lost teams. Yeah. Because they normally win these low-scoring games. But they're, they're, they're scoring some points, yeah. and they probably should have beat Wisconsin. True. So they're, true. they're right at, they're right outside of those others receiving votes. Oh, absolutely. Anyway, um, Iowa State beat Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State was number twenty. Yeah, that they killed. Put up, they put up forty eight points on them. That killed me in the pick em. Texas A and M <laughs> once again beat Kentucky. Uh, Mississippi State beat Auburn. I was now, surprised. Auburn loses. They were number eight. Stidham didn't have a great game. Mississippi State beats Auburn. Um, that jumps them back into the top twenty five. So that's, that's what happened is A&M and Mississippi State are jumping in because they're beating those higher ranked teams, and, and their losses are to Alabama or LSU or to It should be a domino teams. effect, too, because then you see Washington's only loss of the year was yep. to Auburn, and Auburn now has two losses. Yep. And I think it will. I think it's going to hurt them. Um, West Virginia, um, so they beat KU, but right. not by much, by 16. Okay. Uh, Northwestern beat Mich- uh, Michigan State. We talked about that a little bit already. Notre Dame over Virginia Tech. Now, I mentioned last week – I. I didn't think this was going to be a game. I knew Notre Dame was going to win that game. It was game. close for a bit. For a while, then 45-23. Um, I mean, I didn't watch any of this. I don't really know. But, yeah. Um, and so, I mean, that game was decided on the on the run game. Dexter Williams had 17 rushes for 178 yards and three TDs. I mean, their rush game for Notre Dame was the deciding factor. Virginia Tech, right. I mean, I'm and sorry. And I think that is probably because they – Made that quarterback change. Yes. Because book, book has been book fantastic. Throw, then that opens up the run game. Mm-hmm. When you have Wimbush, that was not a very good passer. It, it, was, it was either him handing the ball off or him keeping it. Yeah. And that's easier to defend than when you got a quarterback that can, that can do that both. Can sling it. He's not nearly he's not nearly as good as a runner. And you get your starting running back back. Yep. He's so. not he's not nearly as good of a runner as Wimbush, but when he does take off, he can get yards. Dude is tall, he's got long strides. I mean he, he can make something happen on the ground. Um, but really, I mean, that Dexter Williams made a difference in that game with those three TDs. Um, he, he had a good game on the ground. So they went 45-23. Notre Dame moves up to number six in the standings. Um, like I said, the only thing that they five, really sorry. need to uh, the only thing they need to really watch out for is uh, stumbling against somebody that they shouldn't, because they don't really have anybody left. <laughs> and that and sometimes that's the way Notre Dame. Sometimes and my Ryan and I talk about this all the time. Sometimes they play down to their competition. Yeah. And that's where they the Wake Forest game, the van, you know, the games where they're only winning by four or five points when they shouldn't be blowing out these teams. Not Wake Forest, they put fifty six yeah. on the board. Uh, it was Vandy. Vandy. They beat by five. And but, Ball State. Yes, it's at Ball State. So those games they have to compete. I remember. Back. Yeah, I remember. Because <laughs> um, I'll use it down the road. So, but that, exactly, like they have the, the last game. Uh, USC is their last opponent that truly could cause some trouble, but. I don't think they're going to. I think Notre Dame is the far better team in the remaining games that they have. 
Um, as much as I hate to say that, but it's true. And I mentioned early on, I mentioned early on that they were going to beat Stanford and that after Stanford, they'd have an easy route right. to get into the playoff because the schedule, the teams are playing uh, like a Stanford, like a USC. They are rebuilding. Stanford, you might not think so, but Costello hasn't been there. He, he's not, he hasn't been playing all, all these years. Um, the best thing they have is Bryce Love, and now Bryce Love's hurt, and he's not playing. So, well, and now yeah, and USC is not very good. Um, Florida State's not very good. I think yeah. they have them on their schedule. Yeah. They do have Northwestern, who's been playing a little better. Northwestern that, could that be a better game. And they have lost to Northwestern over the years, yes. in these past few years. Yes. So, yeah, we'll see. But well, they do have, I think, besides Bama, the easiest route to get to the playoff. Yeah, I mean. Easiest route. And they, Bama may not have the easiest because they, they have Jordan. They probably have the easier route. Yeah. They, because they, they have probably a lot do. to play in a conference yeah. championship game. Mm-hmm. So right now, Pac-12's out. They're, they're not going to get in. There's no way. No, not no. a chance. Pac-12, Pac-12 has, a, I think, a 16% chance, I think, is what it was to get in. You um, would have to have multiple teams have two losses to have Washington slide in there somehow. Yeah, and, and Ryan mentioned balance in the game. They had 270 yards rushing on the ground, 165 yards passing. Yeah, that's, that's the balance they needed against a team like Virginia Tech. Um, but once again, Virginia Tech, they just hopped back into the top 25 and – Right. To me, to me, and here's really, the thing: you can you can look at how many games someone wins of teams that are in the top twenty-five. It to doesn't me, it's, mean anything. It's how they finish, right? It's how they, but that's not how the that's not how the playoff committee looks at it, though. That they don't look at where sense. they finish; they look at when they beat them. So, uh, beating a number five LSU for Florida is huge. But where's LSU going to finish at the end of the beating year? Beating Miami, an eighth-ranked Miami, yes. at the first week of the season is huge. Yes, but then but they're not really that good. big. So. Um, but still, Notre Dame is doing what they have to do. They have the best opportunity to run the table. Um, and then what Notre Dame has to do then is just wait. If we run the table, what's these, what are the other two? What's Bama and Georgia? You know that they're going to probably have to play each other in a SC championship game again. And if as long as neither one of them slip up, I think they're both probably going to make yeah. it. Yeah, and Ohio State and Clemson. Clemson could slip. And Honestly, the Big 12 probably hurt themselves, too. With Big 12's probably, Oklahoma. Yeah. I mean, I know West Virginia's still undefeated, but they uh, won't be. A, a one-loss, a one loss, I, and I think even though West Virginia, if West Virginia wins the Big 12, I still think Notre Dame gets in ahead of them. They beat Michigan. They beat Stanford. Yeah. yeah. So they're still beating teams that are good. They're and still... I think, I think, to me, that, in my mind, if I'm, if I'm looking at the teams and who they're playing, I'm putting in a Notre Dame over West Virginia because – they're playing, a to me, a stronger schedule than someone like West Virginia in the Big 12. You know, if West Virginia beat Oklahoma and Texas, and then beat Oklahoma or Texas again, yeah, that, then that'd be maybe. some pretty significant wins. That'd be but, tough. Anyway. Um, grow. Yeah, I mean, we got, yeah, Nebraska's got a lot, lot of ways to grow in the next couple of years. Uh, we'll be competing at top levels like, like a lot of these teams are right now. Um, the last game last night that was noteworthy is Utah beat Stanford. Utah had they won forty to twenty one. I mean, they I watched that entire game and that was a fun game to watch. Stanford uh, only because I love Stanford. Stanford should have lost to Oregon. Mm-hmm. Don't know how they didn't. Yep. Um, got they they should have to lost. Same thing got blown up by Utah. So so we're gonna go over an hour here, which I'm okay with because there's still there's okay. still some good stuff right, to talk about. That's fine. Um, so if you listen to the podcast, it might get cut off. Is what you're saying? Or can you go over an hour? Ninety minutes. Podcast? Ninety minutes. Oh, you can go ninety. Yeah. Oh, never 90 mind. Minutes. Um, so. I thought we yeah, were so time you, Utah Stanford. So I mean, that was a fun game to watch, just because I like seeing Stanford lose. But one thing I texted you last night is, and I put this on, on Twitter, is at what point? Oh yeah. At what I point does Stanford? About this. What point does Stanford look and say, "Do we start asking about David Shaw if he's going to stay longer?" I mean, I'm with you. Y- you look over the years. Where are those big wins? USC. Where? Who else? You don't see a lot of big wins for Stanford over the yeah. year. Yes, he and he's he kind of you know I'm not comparing him to Bo as far as um, who Bo was no, but in that, the Nebraska no, teams, but the records. That that's a pretty good comparison. as far as how long he's been at Stanford. That's a good comparison. They get a lot of wins. They do well. Have yet to reach the playoff. They've won some conference championships, but they're yeah, not, they're the, number one. The one year they they played Iowa in the Rose Bowl, mm-hmm. they were, they are good. They had, they had McCaffrey. That three years ago? They had McCaffrey. Two, three years ago when they got when they destroyed Iowa? That was our first season, I think. Yeah. So it was like four, three, four three, years three, ago. Three, four. Yeah, it was, it was three years ago, I think. Three or four. Either way, um, 
But David Shaw, he's a good coach. So I'm not trying to say he should go or there, he should even be on fire. But is there any smoke? Is there a little bit of smoke starting to where we, we see some chatter about Is that seat getting a little warm? Yeah. It, should David Shaw really be the coach at Stanford now? You have to look at multiple factors as who else is out there? Who could we possibly want to come into Stanford? Um, I think he recruits well. He's an alum. I think he played there. Yeah, I think I think the team is still. I think they got a, young, a lot of young guys on their team. But once again, you look at you look at Bo, nine and three, nine win seasons for nine years, one ten win season. Um, he failed to get the big wins, yeah. failed to get the championship seasons, the conference championships, failed to win bowl games. I mean, those are kind of you know, Stanford maybe not be failing at the bowl games, but right. you look at the long tenure of Shaw, and at what point is Stanford going to start saying? Put a little fire to that ass. Yeah. Like, is that something that Stanford should think about? I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't care either way. I just, I keep seeing the same Stanford over and over again, where they're they look good, and then there's something along the way that does not get them where they should. Or they beat an Oregon and then turn around and get blown out by Notre Dame and blown out by Utah. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't know. I just I think it's worth. I think it's worth exploring the question. Um, yeah, Stanford is very hard to win at. Yeah, and so they won at Stanford. That was the other thing. Utah won at Stanford. Oh damn. Um, so uh, yeah, a very hard place to win. Um, so yeah, I mean, is it a worthy question? I think so. Um, I don't think they're gonna get rid of Shaw. I really don't. Um, but I think it's worth well throwing it out there. They they do. It is kind of pretty similar to Bo. Because they have even, you know, they they play Notre Dame every year. They have beaten Notre Dame. They alternate with USC because yeah. neither one of them ever want to go to Notre Dame when it's cold. <laughs> so yeah, they, they play at home that last week or whatever it is. Hi, Kyle. <laughs> Hi, Kyle. <laughs> um, but uh, they – so the, when Stanford does play them the last game of the season, mm -hmm. it's always at home. Yep. And they have won those games against Notre Dame, but it's been against a Notre Dame that has lost two or three games down the stretch yes. and is feeling kind of defeated. I know it's a, it's a yeah. kind of a rivalry type game. So, I mean, they've won games like that, but have they won the big game to take them to an undefeated exactly. type of season? I, I think... Or a playoff. I think Shaw's a great coach. I think he has what it takes to get them there. But what, what are they missing? What are those missing pieces? They had, they had the McCaffrey and uh, who was the quarterback at the time? Um... Hogan. Hogan. I mean, Hogan was a good quarterback. He, he couldn't yeah. run the ball, but he could throw the ball. Um, oh, yeah. It is hard to win. Yeah, being a coach at Stanford, absolutely. I mean, not only do you have – there's a lot of pressure to be the coach there. You know, we saw that with Harbaugh so. when he was there. Um, just like it is here, just like it is in Texas. Just like those, it is – A lot of those big schools. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, I, let me, let me get, make that clear. I don't think they need to say Shaw needs to be fired, but I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of, you're seeing a lot of that with coaches lately. If they're not getting you to where you want to be as a team and getting close to that playoff, you know, if you're averaging two losses a year, you know, and the, and the big 12 or the Pac-12 is not. It's not a stellar conference. They beat up on each other all the year, all the, all year. So right. they're good. They have good teams. But it's hard for them to get into their. Uh, it's hard for them to get into the playoff because they do beat up on each other. So they're going into the conference championship game. Two teams each have one loss, sometimes two losses, sometimes well, three. And just the national perspective, you you look at the first week of the season going into that first week, and it's Washington against Auburn. This is the biggest game of the season for the Pac-12 because if they lose this game, they're probably going to be out. Yep. And that's just how it looks yep. going in. Like they're already behind the eight ball before yeah. the season's even started. It's not a bad way to schedule, but you screw yourselves if you lose. Well, no, I, I think it's probably good. You got to play those games, win the win that, go out, win that game, yeah. and then yep. win your win your conference. I mean, Washington could win. They could they could prove me wrong. They could run the table and, and figure out a way to slide in. But we'll see. I I don't see it. I don't see it either. Um, but Utah, I mean, they look good. Um, and we'll talk we'll talk one more thing about the running back in a second, but. Um, I want to start something new here on Two Average Guys and, and kind of hand out five stars, if you will, um, for some of the bigger players uh, over the weekend and over Saturday. Don't try not and, to be biased. And even go back to Thursday. 
So I, I originally had Adrian Martinez on there because he had a hell of a good game. But the rest of us didn't win the game. I'm going to take him off as my one of my five stars. We, because could, we could do like a Husker player. We could. Week. A Husker player of the week, Adrian Martinez. He um, might be the player of the week a lot. But I will say you I, I replaced them team. with a Georgia Tech offense. The entire backfield of Georgia Tech and their quarterback. 542, yard rushing, uh, 542 rushing yards. Eight rushing TDs. They won the game 66 to 31. Five different guys had rushing touchdowns in that game. It's a lot. Their, their quarterback, one for two, 12 yards, 50%. That, he threw two passes all game. 66 to 31 over Louisville. Now remember, very first game of the year for Louisville was who? Oh, Alabama. Alabama. And that game was hyped up to be something awesome. It's going to be a really good game. Guess what? Lamar Jackson is not. There it's anymore. not there anymore. And Alabama would, have tore, Alabama would have torn him up anyways. So Louisville has proven over and over again this year they're not good. So they got destroyed by Georgia Tech. And apparently there's some uh, uh, some beef between um, that coach over at Georgia Tech and like the D coordinator uh, for the other team. So, yeah, funny. so I think there was some beef there. So he just huh. rammed it down his throat. So I thought that was funny. Um, J.D. Spielman, I think. J.D. Spielman and Martinez, maybe they're co-players of the week. Because, I mean, he, he beat his own record for 209 yards, but someone had to feed him the ball. Yeah, I guess that's, that's true. What, that 70, was a... 74, 75-yard touchdown um, from Martinez as well. Obviously, he ran, you know, <clears throat> 70 of the, or 60 of those yards. But, um, but yeah, I mean, co-players of the week, Martinez, yeah. Spielman. Okay. Boom. Morgan still had 93 yards, too. He had a great game. I think, once again, can't take any away from any of those two. So, my first star uh, off Nebraska is going to be Georgia Tech's offense. 542 yards rushing, 66 points. Phenomenal. <laughs> um, Sam Ellinger from Texas, 24-35, 314 yards, two TDs. He also had 19 rushes, 72 yards, three touch, and three, three rushing rush TDs. So he accounted for five of their TDs. So, I mean, that's he had a hell of a good game. Um, and he was fun to watch. Like I said, I remember him as a freshman. Uh, I can't remember who their young slinger was at quarterback. Um, was it like Swoops or something? No. No, he was before. It was it was a it was a, a Texas name you'd recognize. I think his dad was used to play there or something. But, okay. Um, I can't remember right off the hand. But they haven't been very they haven't been very good. Yeah, last Sam, Sam Ellinger, great game. Them. I mean, he's rolling. I think he's going to continue to roll. Uh, Dexter Williams for Notre Dame gets a star. Seventeen rushes, one hundred seventy eight yards, three TDs. Zach Moss for Utah, twenty rushes, one hundred sixty yards, and two TDs. And then Nate Stanley, twenty three of thirty nine yards, three hundred fourteen yards passing. And four TDs. So 24, 39, 314 yards, four TDs. So that's unheard of from an Iowa quarterback. Right. I mean, you, just don't, I you don't see that. And that's why I said that earlier. I hate to, it pains me to say, but they should probably be one of these top 25 teams. Yeah, and so Nate Stanley really, he balled yesterday. So he's, he's one of my five ballers or five stars from the weekend. Uh, Nate Stanley gets that fifth one, 23 to 39. Just wait until junior and senior. Yes. You know, bar an injury and... If anybody leaves early or anything. Yeah, yeah so Nate, Nate Stanley, great game. Moss, Williams, Allinger, Georgia Tech. Those are my five stars of the weekend. Okay. Um, I, it was a fun weekend. It really was. It sucks Nebraska lost, but there were still a lot of good games. I, I think I texted you at one point because I'm like, holy shit, like, what? I didn't even know all these, all these teams lost. I had no idea. Uh, I didn't either. I, I mean, I was watching the Nebraska game. I wasn't paying attention the entire time to any other game. And then I get home and I look at scores and I'm like, oh my God, like, <laughs> number well, five, number seven, number eight. I was kind of trying to keep up with like a couple different ones. Plus, I mean, the Cubs are out, but I've been keeping up with the baseball too yeah. a little bit. So I was, yeah. And, I, and I, hockey started. Hockey so, started up. Yeah. As for two and up. Just yeah. <laughs> loser <laughs> own two. That's what I'm talking about. It. Um, anyway, it was, just, it was a fun weekend. Even though Nebraska lost, like I said, you get a lot of positive, a lot of things to take away from that game, a lot of things to build on for next week against Northwestern. And I think the number one thing to build on is how well Martinez played. Spielman and Morgan, those three guys, a combo taking into the Northwestern secondary. Let's see what we can expose. Right. And we know that we know Mo Washington and we can run the ball, and we know our corners can play well. And we know that the stadium is going to be mostly red because it always is in Evansville. Yes. Oh, yeah, Evansville. Evanston. I always say Evansville. Evansville, it's Evanston. Evanston. Um, I know like 10 people that are going to the game. So, um, man, I, I'll make it there eventually. Yeah, I know. And it's always right around playoff baseball time. And I know people that like go to go to the playoff, yeah. go to the, the Husker game during the day and then go to the playoff game at night. 
Jimmy, oh. those are those are rich people. I know. That's not us. <laughs> those are rich people. <laughs> That's true. Um, but anyways, once again, hey, thanks guys for joining in today. Um, I think uh, I appreciate all the we appreciate all the feedback and all the questions and the, the uh, going back and forth here. But um, keep your heads high, Husker Nation. Uh, next few years are going to be fun. I think seeing some of these young guys grow. I think we, so. we got a lot of things to look forward to. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we Just did work in some younger players. We're going to yeah, keep we doing did. that. Um, once again, I think the number one guy to look out for is going to be Cam Taylor on defense as a young guy yep. coming in. So, and on offense, I think uh, obviously Mo, but the second guy is going to be uh, Mike Williams as a wide receiver. So, Especially now that Lindsay left. Yes, a lot of good things to come. So uh, go Big Red. Yep. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm Jimmy. We're two average guys. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, enjoy your Sunday. Go watch some baseball, whatever you guys are going to do. We'll see you next week. <clears throat>